and welcome to our Scratch Chat, your student chat show broadcasted from the heart of BCU. You've joined us on our very first episode of the year, where we have lots of things coming up on today's show, including behind the scenes action of this lovely new crew we have, an interview with our BCU president. You can get involved with the show by finding us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Scratch TV for extras of the show as well as, as, well as behind the scenes content. But before anything, we uh, have new cast members because it's a new year, so new presenters. Uh, after some difficult decisions, uh, we did see a lot of talent and it was very hard to choose, but I would like to introduce you guys to our new presenters. So we have Dan and Hello. Regina, Hello. who are our crew presenters, and Patrick and Grace, who are our Hello. location Hi. presenters. How are we all, guys? Really good, thank you. How Excited are you? for your first yep. show? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool, <laughs> good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What interesting things can you tell me? Dan? Uh, okay, well, I'm Dan. I'm 18 from Peterborough. Mm -hmm. I'm studying media communication. And my interesting fact is that I was on The Gadget Show uh, two Ooh. years ago on Channel 5. It went out two years ago in September. And that's probably the most interesting thing about me. So. <laughs> that's good. Did you know? For me, well, I'm from the Caribbean, the Turks and Caicos. The most interesting thing about me is that I have like, a really expensive taste. Ooh. Which is really weird because my mom always would say, you have expensive taste, but Kool-Aid money, meaning like you have no money at all. Yeah. You know, all these things. Same yeah. here. <laughs> Patrick? Uh, yes, uh, Patrick Lay. Um, originally, I come from Portsmouth, but I've lived up here for a number of years now, shall we say. Um, interesting facts about me. Well, I actually have my own YouTube channel and always Ooh, enjoy nice. going out and doing different things. Um, in terms of my own hobbies, I think just sightseeing and visiting any new places with me and my wife. So. That's cool. Grace? Um, I was trying to think of something, but I'm like, not secretly, I'm an Avril Lavigne fan, which is Ooh, an unpopular that is, opinion. That's an old, but I've, she's, it's out of she's old yeah. fandom. Yeah, I'm holding on in there. <laughs> <laughs> Keep <Just> holding. <laughs> well, I am so glad to be presenting with you guys. And now we've got to know each other. Let's see how our wonderful cast and crew got on with the first few weeks of Scratch TV. I joined Scratch TV because it looked like the best one. I wanted to learn how to use the equipment before I did the module on my degree. I didn't okay. know the camera handling at all before, but I tried camera handling last week, so it helped me a lot. And I'm pretty sure you'll learn a lot of awesome things while yes, you're here. Yes, I, I hope so. Getting involved with the Australian Union is the best experience uh, anyone can have when they're at the university because there's a lot of professionalism to learn from uh, Australian Union. I really wanted to get my hands on some of the more practical media skills and, you know, since I'm not doing that in semester ones. It just gives you a chance to learn new things that you wouldn't learn in your lessons necessarily and socialise with people that might not be in the same modules as you. The fact that you can make friends, like I've made some amazing friends through the societies that I've joined, like already. In it. Well, it's really nice to share, you know, the same, be in the same boat as everybody else and be able to, like, do a subject that I love. I kind of like that we have like a group of people that help each other in different ways of everyone has different skills that can all bring together. Once you're a member of something, it's mean all the people there, they are equal and then you feel more comfortable. So you just get on with everybody, have a little go and like even the students that like teach you, great fun. So it's good. My favourite. <laughs> Looks like everybody had a lot of fun doing that. And speaking of fun, Dejina, what entertainment news do you have for us this week? So this week, Taylor Swift has finally dropped her new album, Repetition, and is already outselling her iconic album, 1989. She's already sold over more copies in the first day than what her previous album sold in its first week, selling 65,000 units in the first three days of its release. So if you haven't really, so she's also recently released the Ready For It video. She's not doing any publicity around this. What do you guys think about it? Well, <laughs> I brought my prop. Um, I was probably one of the first few people to get this album. It came on Friday. It was released on Friday. Um, I was very, very excited to get it. I can imagine. Um, yeah, it, it's good. Um, I think it will grow on me as time um, goes by, but yeah. I, I'm still like in 1989. You yeah, I think her, her old stuff I prefer more because I used to be a, a, like a really old like Taylor Swift fan. I used to love like You Belong With Me, Definitely. Love Story, like you know, all the old stuff, but I'm not really a fan of her new stuff. I know a lot of people are gonna hate me because I said that, <laughs> but I'm sorry, I just don't like I it. I feel like her, her video for Look What You Made Me Do was a bit demonic for me. It was like too much <laughs> going on. Like I was like really scared. Well, you've lost one friend right then, Missy. Let me tell you that right now. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I think it was just really, I, it was just a nice surprise. When I woke up that morning, it was right there. I was like, wow, it's good. But I can see where people kind of like, don't like the criticism from. 
Yeah. Like, I think it's definitely, considering what she went through from 1989, she went from like things like New Romantics and uh, Out of the Woods. Her videos are quite sort of happy and boppy, and next thing you know, it's just sort of like, this is what you guys made me do. I hate Kanye West, everything left, right, and centre. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. goodness me. <laughs> Well, more allegations of sexual harassment has been released after the recent focus on Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey. This time, allegations comes from actress Ellen Page, who accused director Brent Renard of sexual harassment and inappropriate homophobic comments. It supposedly happened at a meet and greet event with the cast and crew promoting the film X-Men, The Last Stand, and that Renard outed her before she was ready to come out. Like, I think that's a bit bad, you know? That's very Definitely. bad. Definitely. You know, if, if someone's sexuality, then it, it's their business. Yes. No definitely. one has a right to, like, do it for you. You yeah. do it when you're ready. Everybody who comes out as gay, comes out as bisexual, has their own individual journey. Yeah, definitely. And, like, it doesn't help when people tamper with it. And mm. if you get outed, it's probably one of the worst feelings in the world, so... Especially because um, she was actually, like, 16 years old when she got outed by him. Mm. So for a 16-year-old, that must have been super confusing. She probably was like, I don't actually know what I'm feeling myself. So yeah. the fact that you've basically told everybody is just really horrible. And especially on a worldwide platform as well, such as like the X-Men movie. And like, that was such a big movie. Exactly, it was really good. Yeah. Um, but the thing is though, when you come out, it's really, really cool. But like there are friends I know now who are even 18, 19, yeah. having their own journey. And to have that happen to you at 16, it must be mortifying. It must yeah, be. Yeah, because like back in, the, back in that time, you know, you really wasn't having much persons come out as, as lesbian or gay mm. because of the, you know, the topics that was going on about it. But now in America, it's like, you know, you get your get. You just shake yeah. it off. Yeah. Doesn't shake it off. <laughs> I love a Taylor Swift reference. <laughs> and, well, speaking of Taylor, and with Taylor Swift was might with a new album release, she left the AMAs with no awards despite six nominations. Instead, the night was all about Sean Mendez, who left the show with four awards, Best Actor, Best Canadian Actor, Best Fan Group. Like, he's doing really good. I don't think he's relevant, like, I mean, obviously his songs are good, Goodness but... Goodness me. No, it's like, it's weird how he's got four nominations, yet Taylor Swift got nothing, even though she's, I think she's more popular than him. Exactly, one of the standout moments for me was uh, George Shelley going to complete to the O2 Arena, so <laughs> he went to completely the wrong venue, so that was funny for me to watch on Snapchat. Yeah. He's really popular, because on Snapchat recently, him and Hailey, Hailey Boylwood, who Justin Bieber's ex, were caught together. Oh. So I think she's getting a lot of media attention right now due to that. Well, lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Dejina, for your entertainment roundup. And now, giving us an insight to the man behind the very iconic smile, Patrick caught up with student president Jaspreet to discuss the future plans with the union. Good morning from Scratch TV, I'm Patrick Lay, and today I'm joined by the president of the BCU Students' Union, Jaspreet Singh. Jaspreet, it's great to finally meet you. I understand that a belated congratulations in order at becoming the new president. Um, tell us, what exactly inspired you to take on such an influential and indeed crucial role? Uh, first of all, allow me to begin with say greeting, Vaiguji ka khalsa, Vaiguji ki fateh. So it's been a blessing that students over here, they've elected and put faith in myself to elect me as uh, president of the Students' Union. So it's really good. It's really, I absolutely love it. And I think the thing which really inspired me was the classroom experiences which I was going through. So very much uh, kind of being on the ground, like the thing which I was able to see, oh my God, like student union presidents or vice president, you should be going out speaking to students and it should be very visible. So I had a dream. I started seeing all things happening around myself. Then I was like, I need to get involved as well. So I ran for ethnic minority officer oh, so right, in okay. my second year and I lost by 29 votes. Ooh, so it was very close. close. Call, yeah. yeah, it yeah. was very, I should say, very close, but still, thank God. It's a blessing to get elected as president of the Students' Union. So it's March earlier this year. Um, yeah. You've obviously won the election. Take us back to that momentous night and just what it made you feel at the time. It was really good. <laughs> it was kind of a dream coming true. Um, how shall I say, I'm going to be very honest, I never imagined on the first day when I came to this university as an international student, my God, literally my English wasn't good and it was really hard and uh, people used to laugh at me and all that really? stuff. Yeah, so I never imagined on my first day that one day I will be the president of the university. So, so it was really good on that night. I felt, oh my God, it's only because of the students I'm here, like thanks to all of them who elected me. So it was a good thankful moment for me. I will say, yeah. I was going to say, it to happen sort of so soon after graduating as well. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah massive, uh, massive sense of achievement for you. So what plans have you put in place or, or shall I say, key areas you're looking to focus on to change? 
Uh, how shall I say, my dream is to initiate intercultural, interfaith, international dialogue in the university. So it's very much when we come to university, so we've got students from 72 different countries, like for example me, English is my fourth language, oh, really? <laughs> which no, I'm speaking. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. thank God. And this is the kind of thing when we come to university, university is a place where we can learn by each other. Because if you see what kind of narratives if in wider society are being pushed, so it's very much like we are being put against each other. This is how I feel, especially as an immigrant in this country. So my dream is basically a person sitting next to you actually embraces you as you are. So you don't have to amend yourself to be part of a system, mm -hmm. but you can be yourself, be different. And I think that's the beauty. Like, it's just an analogy. Take this world is a garden. In a garden, we can have uh, blue flowers, red flowers, yellow flowers. And the garden looks beautiful only because of it has got different flowers oh, the, and it's all diverse. together. Yeah. yeah. So that's the VE, like, that's my dream. So that's my main focus. And other things which I'm hoping to do and I've started doing already is to make the voice of students more louder into the council and in the wider society, like in National Union of Students. So recently, last, last week, I met uh, Lord Mayor and we uh, had a chat with them. It was all university uh, presidents from the uh, Birmingham. So it was really good. So she said, uh, so you can be involved in different committees. And today I'm actually going to be meeting Lord Mayor again. Oh, well, so it's OK. So it was a success last time. So it was so really, really good. Brilliant. And the other thing is about student safety as well. So the students on the campus feel safe, and especially regarding hate crime, is on a rise. So hopefully, like those are my kind of three areas which I'm really looking into. And like all students, it's um, it's very heartwarming for me to know there is this ethos that you're you're, you're bringing in here, or Thank you. indeed what's already in place. Uh, you know, for people to, to you know to bring students together and, yeah. and to have that in inclusion, if you like. So it's very good to know. And it sounds like you've already got a lot of plans put yes. in place there to consolidate on this. No, definitely, so. definitely. It's my dream. I should say, it's my dream to initiate dialogue around everything. And there's no reason why that can't happen. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, you're a very busy man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm guessing that. Uh, spare time, shall we say, is something of a precious commodity for you. When, when you do get time, um, what hobbies do you enjoy to take part in? Um, how shall I say, um, I love basketball. So I was part of the BCO basketball team last year. I absolutely love it. And I'm very much close to music, oh, holy, yeah. holy music. Do you play a particular instrument? I play mandolin. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you? I it's play lovely mandolin. sound that is. So. Yeah, and recently I started playing a very uh, traditional instrument, a rabab. So music is very close to my heart. Then I love listening to sad songs and writing sad music as well. So it makes me feel that actually there's someone and I just say I love going to Gurdwara and that's the place yeah. where I find everything. And I'm of kind course. of like beggar in that moment. Oh my God, God bless me with something. So, yeah. No, no, it's good to embrace these things. And yeah. um, in terms of, um, you, you say you actually write other music as well. Is it in any particular languages or is it, is it mainly like in, say, Punjabi? Or in Hindi Punjabi, or? yeah, yeah. In Punjabi. Yeah. So I love it when I write music in Punjabi. So, yeah, it's very much kind of like lyrics, what kind of things are going through my mind. So I love to write it. Oh, that's wonderful. It sounds like you've got so much in place, even even as someone who's who's busy on such a regular basis. Yeah. Well, finally, going back to your election victory, yeah. um, you know, as a former student here of BCU, a former graduate, no doubt it's such an honour to be the first international student to be yeah. elected as the president, as, as you were saying earlier on. What legacy are you hoping this will leave for, for fellow overseas students who are aspiring to emulate you, should we say? Yeah, I think my dream is at the end of the day, like, as an international student, like, I will go through my experiences. It was really hard. I wasn't able to speak English properly. People used to use language to, in order to say to me, oh, actually, be there. And I was like, nah, <laughs> so I've got big dreams in my mind. So, like, the legacy which I will say is to enable not only international students, but to just get that thing in everyone's mind that internationalization, no matter, is for everyone. We can all learn from each other. It's not only, take example, a student coming from, I don't know, maybe a very far away country, like mm -hmm. I've got friends from uh, Togo in oh, Africa, right. Right, and okay. Namibia, like it can be, I don't know, maybe in a uh, like very rural village like myself from India, but it's an opportunity where we can learn about that culture. And this is what I'm really hungry about. And hopefully, like, that's the legacy. It should not be myself 
many other students should be coming into these positions. And people, well. will, people will definitely look at um, you know what you've achieved, or you know, or, or where, what you should say for someone who. Uh, it seems remarkable to think that you know your English should have been limited at one point. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really, you know, for me, it seems quite staggering to think that. Um, but obviously, nevertheless, that's how it was then, and this is how it is now. But it, it just shows how, how much hard work you've put in over the years to, yeah. to um, you know, for your own point of view, and obviously for fellow students as well, and you know, for people you know from sort of all, all four corners of the world, by the sounds of it. Yeah, I should say thank God. So it was really hard, but I embraced the challenges which came my way. I embraced the hardships which came my way, and I think that's the thing which really pushed me. And I was like, nah, I can't wait for someone else. I should be the first one to do it. Mm. So it's really good. I still say it's a blessing. Yesterday I was meeting with the uh, Department of Education regarding interfaith in this country. And it was really high level discussion how interfaith in all the universities in the UK can be put. So it's been a really a great blessing for a person who was in village, but now is going and seeing uh, like big government officials. So well, it's really, really say, good. It sounds like you're meeting a lot of people who are in the yeah. in those in such places and, and, and such influential people as well, which is yeah. which is wonderful, wonderful indeed. Jasper, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here today. Thank and I'm you, sure you all agree with me. What a great insight we've been given into the wonderful and extensive work that's done each day by both Jasper and the team at BCU Students Union. So until next time, a very good day to you all. Fantastic stuff. Don't forget to contact Jasper or any of the other student union representatives if you have any concerns, compliments or comments to send their way. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Tune in to our next show for more entertainment news and interviews from the heart of the, this university. Remember to find us on social media at Scratch TV and get involved with the show. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>